Hi, welcome to the third part of the walkthrough for creating this happy birthday greeting video. In this part, I will continue to show you additional improvements I added to the balloon, which is the main subject for the project. Now, after reviewing the video from where I left off in the second part, I felt the balloon's entry into the scene looked too rigid and so I wanted to make it feel flexible. So I decided to add an overshoot action to the balloon as it rises before settling into its final location. I also wanted to give the balloon a squash and stretch action as it rises and stops. Now squash and stretch is an animation principle that makes an object look stretched or squashed based on its movement. When applied correctly, it can make an object look flexible or fluid as it moves or performs an action. Now here are three examples of a bouncing ball. The ball on the left looks rigid because it has no squash and stretch applied to it. However, the ball in the center has some stretch and squash applied to it and so it looks less rigid. Now the ball on the right is very flexible because it has a lot of stretch and squash applied to it. Now to do this, I first added an armature to control the squash and stretch of the balloon using a technique from a YouTube channel called Alien Soup. I have left a link to that tutorial in the video description below. So I went to frame 0 and in the front view, I added an armature and snapped it to the balloon's empty. I adjusted its length in edit mode to be the same length as the balloon. Next, I cleared the parenting of the balloon from its empty and parented it to the armature using automatic weights. After that, I parented the armature to the balloon's empty. So as you can see, the original animation of the balloon is preserved even though we have changed its parenting to the armature. This is because the armature is also parented to the balloon's empty. Now when I scale down the height of the armature, it squashes the balloon preserving its volume. When I also scale it up, the balloon is stretched whilst maintaining its volume. So after setting up the rig, I went ahead to create the overshoot action for the balloon's rise. So I made sure the ribbon's empty was selected and moved the keyframe for the position after the rise from frame 30 to 60. Next, I went to frame 30 and changed the Z location so that the balloon moves up to its overshoot location. Then I went to frame 0 and selected the armature and set a keyframe for the Z scale. Then I went to frame 10 and set the Z scale to 1.08 to increase it slightly. This will stretch the balloon as it rises. Then I went to frame 35 a bit after the overshoot position and set the Z scale to 0.99 to squash the balloon slightly as it stops and is about returning to its final location. Then at frame 50, I set the Z scale to 1.03 to stretch it slightly as it moves to its final location. Finally, at frame 70 where it comes to its final resting location, I set the Z scale to 1. So I went ahead and played the animation and was quite happy with the results. I also did a quick render to check out the results since my computer was not able to give me the correct playback frame rate in the viewport. Okay, lastly, I also noticed the ribbon was too rigid and not having a realistic behavior, so I used a cloth simulation to animate it. First, I selected the ribbon and went to the weight paint mode and painted a vertex selection at both ends. The ends will be pinned in during the cloth simulation so that they will follow the existing animation, otherwise the entire ribbon will fall under gravity when I run the cloth simulation. Next, I renamed the vertex group for the selected vertices painted. I then went ahead to the physics property and selected cloth to add cloth simulation. I increased the quality steps to 6 and decreased the vertex mass to 0.05 kilograms to simulate a lighter material. Next, I activated pinning for the vertex weight by heading over to the shape section and under pin group selected the vertex group I created earlier. I then went to the cache section and set the disk cache on so that the simulation will be baked on disk. This means I don't have to rebake when I close and reopen the Blender file, 
Next, I set the simulation end frame to 1320 to ensure it covers the entire animation. I then went ahead to bake the simulation. After baking, I played the animation to check the cloth simulation and oh boy, it looked really good. If you watch the first part of this walkthrough, I created two materials, one for the front part of the balloon and the other for the back. For each material, I created two shaders and made one metallic. I then added two textures. The first texture was the base color for both shaders and the second a max texture which was used to mix the two shaders using a mix shader. Now because the balloon turned to the front and back twice, it showed each message twice when we played the animation. However, I wanted a different message when each side was shown a second time. This means I needed to change the texture before showing each side the second time. So I went ahead and created two extra textures, one for the front and one for the back. For each new texture, I also created a max texture for defining the metallic areas. Next, I selected the front material and from the folder editor, I selected a new front texture and its max texture and dragged them to the shader editor. I then connected the new textures to the mapping node. Next, I added a mix RGB node and connected the previous base color texture to color one input and the new base texture to color two input. I then connected the outputs of the mix RGB node to the base color of both shaders. I also added another mix RGB node and connected the previous max texture to color one input and the new max texture to color two input. I then connected the output of the mix RGB node to the factor input for the mix shader node. Next, I added a value node and connected it to both factor inputs for the mix RGB nodes. This ensured that their factors were always the same. All right, so setting the value to zero displayed the first texture and setting it to one displayed the second texture. Then I went ahead to animate the factor value to one to change to the second texture when the front side of the balloon faced away from the camera before it showed for the second time. So I went to frame 599 and set a keyframe for the value parameter. Then I went to the next frame and set the value to one and set a keyframe for it. So as you can see, the balloon showed the second message when it turned to the front the second time. Now I went ahead and also repeated this for the back material of the balloon. Finally, I decided to add some volumetric effect and light rays to brighten up the mood of the scene and reduce the high contrast of my colors. So I first added the cube and made sure it surrounded the camera and the balloon. I then added a new material and changed the default shader to a principled volume shader. Then I changed the color to a light pink and reduced the density to 0 0.015. I increased the emission strength to 0 0.05 to brighten it up and set the emission color to a deep purple. For the light rays, I added two spots light in front of the balloon and four point lights behind the balloon. I first did this by creating the spot light in the front view and move it up and to the right. Then in the top view, I place it between the camera and the balloon. I then increased the power to a high value of 50,000 to create a strong light ray. I made it smaller by reducing the radius to 0.01 and the size to 5 degrees. Next, I wanted the light rays to be moving and rotating randomly. So I went to the first frame and set a keyframe for the location and rotation. I added a noise modifier for the X rotation in the graph editor and reduced the strength to 0.250. I then copied the noise modifier and pasted it into the Y rotation and set a different value for the phase value. I also created a noise modifier for the X location 
and increase the scale to 140 to have a gentle variation in its movement. I also set a random phase value. Next, I copied the noise modifier and pasted it for the Y location and changed the phase value. Finally, I pasted the noise modifier in the Z location and increased the strength to 2 to have a more varied movement in the Z direction. I also set a random phase value. Next, I duplicated the spot's light and move it more towards the left and at frame 0, I set a keyframe for the location. I also adjusted the phase and offset values for its noise modifiers to make its motion different from the first spot's light. Then in the front view, I added a point light and move it more to the left and in the top view, I move it behind the balloon. I increase the power to 500 and the radius to 0 0.5. Then I set a keyframe for the location and the radius at frame 0. I added a noise modifier for the X, Y and Z location. I increased the strength for the X and Z location to 2 and applied random phase values to each of them. I also added a noise modifier for the radius parameter because I wanted varying size for the point light. Finally, I duplicated the point lights and placed them at different locations behind the camera but not outside the volume boundary. I went ahead to set a keyframe for their locations at frame 0. Lastly, I added random values to the phase and offset values for the noise modifiers on the point lights to add variation to their movements and size. So I went ahead and did a test render for all the improvements and was quite happy with the result. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification to be notified when I release the fourth and final part of this tutorial and other videos.